we know the Myerson's characterization result now and we also know uh, what kind of what is the type of mechanism which are truthful uh, in, in a single object allocation domain. Let us now look at some of the examples of such mechanisms which are truthful uh, and uh, false in this class. So the first two examples are quite standard. So constant allocation and dictatorial, we know that those are monotone allocations, um, but they are not super interesting because they are very, uh, very trivial mechanisms. The first interesting mechanism is that of uh, second price auction. We have already seen it in uh, various contexts. Uh, let us see why it is falling in the same class and how we can actually uh, pictorially represent uh, the the second price auction in the context of uh, uh, in the context of Myerson. So let us uh, look at the payment formula in this case. So we know that uh, the, the 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 first part is uh, let's say it is uh, assumed to be equal to zero. Then the second price auction we know that this is not a uh, randomized allocation; it's a deterministic allocation. You give the object to the highest valued agent. Uh, if that agent is a high, highest value, then it gets this object uh, with probability 1 uh, and all other agents get, get it with uh, probability 0 and it uh, pays the second highest bid. So let us look at that agent which has the highest value in this case. So, um, so imagine agent i is the highest valued agent, then this function is nothing but a step function. We already have seen uh, this diagram before that this is the this is the allocation so this is the fi uh, of ti t minus i and where i is the highest uh, valued agent so the its uh, ti value is the highest so uh, we can look at the second highest value and denote that with t minus i2 so this is the max over all the other agents valuations of their types so as long as uh, it's uh, the, the type of agent i is below this value it is not going to win that object and after that it is going to win that object with probability 1 uh, and uh, exactly at that point the allocation can be anything so there could be multiple agents who can be probabilistically given this object that will not have any impact in terms of the the payment that it makes so you can look at this so this is going to be exactly one for player one so this is going to be ti so essentially this is nothing but this whole um, um, rectangle here now if you look at this quantity here this is nothing but this green shaded region so if you subtract that out payment is nothing but this uh, this red part here and therefore the utility is uh, is this uh, uh, the, the ti which is uh, nothing but the whole um, uh, whole area of this uh, rectangle uh, minus that payment which is going coming back again to this blue uh, this uh, green part here so uh, and uh, as you can see that the payment is uh, is just this part which is nothing but the one so the, the uh, what is this area under this uh, under this uh, red region uh, it is the second highest uh, bit multiplied by one so therefore this is the second highest bit. so we know that this payment is nothing but the second highest bit. So this is the second price auction and it can be very well classified inside this Myerson class of mechanisms uh, with the appropriate values of uh, Fi and Ti. Now let us look at the efficient allocation with a reserve price. So we have seen this uh, uh, earlier that uh, the, the second price auction, uh, in the second price auction on top of uh, uh, asking the agent uh, for, a, uh, for, a, uh, for the second highest bid. Uh, as their payment, one can also set a reserve price and uh, fix something like a uh, maximum value of T minus I2 and that reserve price I. So, uh, what happens in that case is this uh, uh, threshold gets replaced by the max of uh, these two quantities T minus I2 and that reserve price here. And there also we can see that the allocation rule is monotone and therefore the, the corresponding uh, uh, payment will be just this this point so max of these two things and uh, the the argument is exactly similar to the second price option so we will not uh, go over it once again so this al efficient allocation with a reserve price uh, is also a non decreasing allocation rule and therefore you can design uh, uh, design this uh, Myerson mechanism 
uh, which will be uh, which will be truthful but now let us look at some uh, not so uh, uh, not so common allocation rules these are something which we haven't seen before and we did, uh, unless we knew the uh, the Myerson's mechanism or the Myerson's characterization, perhaps we would not have thought about this kind of rules to be truthful. So suppose the allocation has three components. Uh, the first component is uh, whether to decide uh, uh, that uh, if the, that agent, that uh, object is to be sold at all or not. So A0 is the decision where it is not sold. A1 is the decision where it is sold to agent 1 and A2 is it is sold to uh, player 2. And there are only two players in this case. So now, uh, given the type profile at uh, uh, T1, T2, the seller first computes the, uh, uh, this corresponding number, which is a maximum between three numbers. So the first thing is some arbitrary constant, let's say two, and the second and third are T1 squared, so the type of uh, player one squared, and T2, uh, the type of player two cubed and uh, select it will select a0 a1 or a2 depending on which of this is uh, uh, is the maximum so if this is this maximum so if uh, this turns out to be the maximum then the uh, the mechanism will not uh, sell this object at all if this happens to be the maximum then it will give the object to player one uh, and in this case it is going to give it to uh, agent two this is a very strange mechanism but uh, what we are going to argue is that here also this mechanism this allocation rule is monotone and therefore you can uh, design the corresponding um, uh, the payment formula which will make sure that this mechanism is uh, implementable in dominant strategies so why is this uh, monotone uh, so you can uh, see that uh, you, you can break the uh, uh, break the tie in in whichever order and suppose there exists already a tie breaking rule so uh, the player one will uh, get this object if you if it's t1 crosses this threshold of max of uh, two times t2 t2 square uh, t2 cube so essentially square root of that so if uh, this happens so it is essentially uh, spelling out the condition under which this becomes the maximum so if that becomes the maximum then player one will get that object so in the it will have a very similar allocation function it will also be a step function and this threshold will be given by different numbers something like this this is for player uh, player one uh, if this threshold becomes this then it will after that it will uh, start getting that object before that it will not get that object similarly for player two will get this object where this threshold is being replaced by this so this will then that will be the allocation rule for player uh, player two actually this should be t1 and this should be t2 so there is no t3 anywhere okay so that's uh, uh, that's the condition so uh, what we can see is this allocation rule for both this uh, both these players is a monotone allocation rule and therefore we can uh, equivalently compute the corresponding uh, payments using the myerson's uh, formula uh, and we can make this mechanism uh, dominant strategy incentive Okay, so let us now look at the uh, property of individual rationality. We have seen this property earlier, uh, but in the context of single object allocation, this will have certain implications on the uh, on the Myerson's result that we have uh, uh, shown in the previous module. So the mechanism is exposed individually rational, and we emphasize this term exposed, which means that even after all the agents have revealed their types, participating is weakly preferred. So this is the meaning. Uh, of, uh, of exposed even after all agents have revealed their types so even after observing everyone else's type uh, it will be beneficial for you to participate so the the definition is fairly simple your expected utility uh, is is going to be non-negative for every type uh, of your uh, own and the types of the other players and this should hold for every player so what is the uh, so what are the implications of individual rationality on the Myerson's characterization result that we have uh, seen. So uh, here is the lemma which uh, says that formally. So a single object allocation in the single object allocation setting, uh, if we have a DSIC mechanism f comma p, then uh, it is going to be individually rational if and only if this uh, the the constant uh, that we had in the in that integral formula 
is going to be non positive and uh, on top of that if you also want to uh, ensure no subsidy condition then uh, this pi tit minus i has to be non negative uh, for all these all these players then this uh, constant quantity is going to be exactly equal to zero so this is this is nothing but the the condition of non no subsidy that is the, the payment uh, given by each of these players has to be non negative then this quantity has to be exactly equal to zero so let us look at why this is true and in fact the proof is really very simple and straightforward uh, because this is uh, individually rational we already know that this mechanism is dsic so we can without loss of generality assume that uh, the myerson's uh, payment formula holds and the uh, payment formula so because we will have to ensure that this is going to be uh, non negative for every valuation so what is the definition of uh, individual rationality this inequality should hold for every ti and t minus i and we know this uh, from the myerson's result this the, the payment formula that we, we have to satisfy, we just replace uh, those values with ti to be equal to zero. So then the first part actually goes uh, goes away, it is going to be zero. And also those uh, two integral parts, so if pi had pi ti t minus i had uh, the first term was uh, just this zero and t minus i, but the second part has ti fi ti t minus i. This also goes to zero when you uh, plug in uh, ti to be equal to zero, and integral from zero to ti uh, f of x t minus i dx that will also go to zero if we uh, plug ti to be equal to zero. So essentially, in in this part, uh, there will be only this term left, and because it, it has to be non non negative, we have this uh, pi has to be non positive. Pi zero of t minus i has to be non positive. So conversely, if we have this to be uh, non-positive, then we'll have to show that uh, this also satisfies the individual rationality constraint. And we can do that just by writing writing down the uh, utility expression explicitly. We have this ti f t i t minus i, and then uh, expand out the, the payment formula um, as we have here. We notice that these two terms get cancelled out. And now this quantity is nothing but this is a probability distribution. So therefore, all these terms will be non-negative, and we are taking the integral. So this part will be uh, non-negative as well. And because this term is uh, this pi zero is non-positive, so negative of that will be non non-negative. So the whole term will be non non-negative as well. So therefore, we have proved that this mechanism this uh, mechanism uh, with this condition uh, of uh, on pi zero is going to be individually rational okay so in part two we are going to prove uh, in on top of individual rationality we also want to ensure no uh, uh, no subsidy so all the uh, payments has to be non non negative and uh, if that has to happen for all uh, uh, ti's you can as well put uh, uh, put that ti to be equal to zero and uh, that has non uh, non negativity now and by uh, individual rationality, you already know that this has to be non-positive. So the only possibility is that this is exactly equal to zero. So, and the uh, and the converse thing is always true that if you if we have this to be exactly equal to zero, then it is very straightforward to see that this is going to be individually rational uh, uh, by by the very condition that this is exactly equal to zero. And it is also not going to be not, not going to have any no subsidy uh, condition because it is not going to give any subsidy uh, because uh, because of the fact that the allocation policy is uh, is monotone. So we can again draw something like that uh, that uh, uh, the picture that we have shown last time. The payment is always going to be non-negative. Okay, so that uh, with that, let us now uh, go into uh, some mechanisms which are non-vickery auctions. So uh, so far we have discussed only vickery auctions that you have a threshold, and only one agent who is crossing that threshold is the sole winner. So this is something like a mechanism which is a deterministic mechanism. But our characterization result of uh, uh, of uh, Myerson uh, does not only apply to uh, deterministic mechanisms, it also applies to non-deterministic or randomized mechanisms. So let us look at some of those examples, some uh, randomized mechanisms, which is also 
um, truthful under this uh, under this setting of single object allocation and we are going to focus mostly on budget balance that is the payment that has been made by all the players uh, if that take, if we take their sum that should be very close to zero uh, if not exactly equal to zero okay so the first mechanism that we are going to define is that uh, the object goes to the highest bidder again this is a this is a deterministic mechanism uh, but the payment is such that everyone is compensated some amount. Here also the allocation is uh, very straightforward. The highest bidder gets the whole object and all the other agents get uh, zero allocation. So their payment, if you look at the Myerson's formula, uh, uh, only the constant term remains, everything else goes away. So, um, uh, but for player one, there is something which is left over. So we'll, we'll uh, uh, calculate that. So let us uh, assume that so in, in this mechanism those constant values are decided in the following way the constant value for player 1 and that for player 2 is nothing but minus 1 uh, 1 nth of, uh, of the third highest bit. So without loss of generality we are assuming that this T1 to uh, so T1 is greater than T2, T2 is greater than three, T3 and so on. They are ordered uh, in a decreasing order um, uh, of their of their types. Now everyone else, apart from this uh, highest and the second highest bidder, receives one nth of the high, uh, second highest bid. So which means that uh, this is going to be um, uh, t i zero comma t i t minus i. That is going to be minus one by n of the second highest in in the rest of the set t j j uh, j is not equal to i. So in um, uh, in this case, this is just going to be T2 because that's the second highest bit. Okay, so now we can use that uh, constant things and uh, the fact that uh, uh, because this is uh, dominant strategy incentive compatible, the Myerson's payment formula will, will hold. Uh, first thing to notice that uh, this kind of a mechanism is a monotone allocation rule. So you are always giving it to the highest bidder. So the high, highest bidder uh, the, the threshold that it, the, when it crosses the threshold of the second highest bid, it is going to be the winner before that it is zero. And therefore this is a monotone allocation rule. So the, the payment, so this is the, uh, that constant part. So P0, P10, comma T, uh, T minus one. This is the, uh, uh, this is that expression, which uh, we have already defined. Now the player one is going to be the winner, so uh, therefore this this is t one multiplied by one, and uh, the last term of that integral formula is integral from zero to t one, uh, f one x comma t minus one dx, and this player does not win until uh, t two, so therefore uh, this integral will be nothing but t one minus t two. After t two, it uh, starts winning uh, with probability one, and therefore when you sum all of them up. Uh, T1 cancels out from both sides, uh, from uh, from here and here, and what we are left with is this. So similarly, player two pays just this amount because the rest of the part is zero because it does not get that object. All the other agents are getting minus one by n times T2. So this is according to the definition. Now, if you look at the the sum of all these payments, you can do this uh, calculation. There will be n minus uh, two all other agents. What you will have is 2 by n times uh, t2 minus t3. And as n increases, you can see that this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, excess amount of money that is going to be taken away by the auctioneer goes very much close to zero. So this is a deterministic mechanism that also redistributes the money, but it redistributes ensuring that this is uh, uh, truthful. Let us look at a, a non-deterministic mechanism, a randomized mechanism, which allocates the, the, the object with probability 1 minus 1 by n to the highest bidder and with probability 1 by n to the second highest bidder. So this is also a, uh, a monotone allocation rule, you can convince yourself. So uh, what is this constant? So constant is nothing but minus 1 by n. We can pick the constants in whichever way we want. Uh, this mechanism picks it uh, as minus 1 by n times the second highest bid in the rest of the agents, right? So for, for instance, this will be uh, uh, t, uh, t3 for player 1, this will be t2 
T3 uh, for both player 1 and player 2 and T2 for all the other players. So, so we can we can do this calculation. So we can see that. Uh, well, so when player one, so again we are uh, assuming that uh, the value, the type of player one is the highest, and uh, it uh, keeps on decreasing uh, with increasing uh, index of these players. Um, so the the first constant. Is, so this is the the p zero, the the constant of this integral, and. Uh, so with probability this um, the player becomes the winner so this is t1 times f1 and f1 is nothing but 1 minus 1 by n uh, and uh, then we have uh, the the integral so this this entire part is the integral from 0 to t1 f f1 of x comma uh, t minus 1 dx now we know that uh, between uh, 0 to t3 uh, um, the player does not win from t3 to t2 this is the second highest bidder so therefore it has a probability of winning which is 1 by n so between t2 to, at, and t3 and from t2 onwards to t1 this is the highest bidder so it, it will have this probability of winning which is 1 minus 1 by n this is between t1 and t2 so if you do the integral uh, 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 divide the integral into these parts you will get this uh, all these terms and if you sum them up you will get this quantity here similarly you can compute the second highest bidder uh, second highest bidder will only have up to this point here it is not winning here it is winning with probability 1 by n and when you take the sum you will see that this is going to be exactly equal to 0 and for all other players uh, this uh, the the payment is going to be just the constant quantity because they never win so uh, their uh, the only constant quantity is their uh, their payment and because this is negative it means that they are getting paid so player one is actually paying uh, player two is pay, um, paying nothing even though it is getting some uh, share of this allocation uh, the all the other players are not getting anything but they are uh, 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 getting some payment uh, so they are being compensated with some payment but the interesting thing is now if you sum all these payments together it will be exactly equal to zero so this mechanism is certainly uh, strategic uh, the uh, this mechanism is certainly strategic proof because of the property that we have used this is the uh, this is falling in the myerson's class the allocation is monotone and the payment is following this uh, uh, payment formula but additionally it is also ensuring budget balance what it is losing because of this allocation rule it is not efficient and we have seen this before the allocation if that becomes uh, uh, efficient then it, it is not going to be budget balanced uh, which is the problem with vcg uh, that that problem persists even in this uh, situation uh, we have found a mechanism which is uh, which is redistributing the money so someone is paying and someone is getting paid uh, and the allocation is such that uh, this is monotone and it is strategy proof, but it is not efficient yet. It is uh, uh, budget balance. So since our objective is budget balance We have seen a mechanism which is budget balance uh, and uh, also falls in the Myerson's class